Welcome back to All About the Paws, the ultimate podcast for all things dogs. I'm your host, Andretta, and today we're going to talk about ways to keep our fur babies happy when we leave the house. For all the love that dogs give us when we're with them, some pups have a flip side. When we're not with them, they become nervous wrecks. Now, this state of heightened, frightful loneliness certainly isn't good for their physical and mental health. And it's no picnic either for neighbors who hear their hours of loud barking. So to help you understand the roots of dog separation anxiety and what to do about it, I've put together about four to five questions that are pretty common and I've given you guys some answers as what to do about separation anxiety for your dogs, different behaviors to look at, as well as is the common what you're seeing in your dog's behavior when you leave and other things that you need to be on the lookout for. So let's get started. First up. How exactly does separation anxiety reveal itself in dogs? So generally, any undesired behavior in an animal left alone reflects separation anxiety. So in dogs, we're talking about inappropriate toileting, such as them using the bathroom, defecating in the home, barking until they're hoarse, scratching at the doors. All of those things, y'all, are major ways that people find out that they've pretty much got a problem. Or perhaps the neighbor may come over and say, hey, you know, (laughs) your dog was barking all day and it's driving me crazy because I have a sleeping newborn. It happens. So you do your best to correct the situation, but in extreme cases, the animals go completely crazy and try to bite their way out of the room that they've been left in, or they're chewing on the door and door frame. Ultimately, the problem is defined by human observers who find the dog is doing something they prefer it wouldn't do. And generally, these behaviors indicate that the animal is in distress. So now let's look at how common this is in dogs. So guys, this is the most common canine behavior problem that has been reported in the United States. And it's the most common behavioral reason that dog owners usually visit a veterinarian. So let's talk about the causes. Is this something that occurs naturally in some dogs or are there human behaviors that you know can bring this more to the forefront? Now, people often talk about it as an abnormal reaction to normal circumstances. But I say y'all that it is often an understandable reaction to unreasonable circumstances. I think people leave their dogs alone far too much. Like just too much. We bring them into our lives. We love them because they are so affectionate and so loving. Then we treat them as if they're gadgets. Like we could just put them away. Like they are an AI box or Alexa or a smart speaker that we just walk by here and there. But a piece of furniture that you leave or an AI box or any type of smart anything that you have in a home. Dogs are living, vibrant beings and they need company. Not at every moment of the day, but they need more company than people give them. So y'all, before the pandemic, when we went out and left them alone, we often pushed them beyond a reasonable limit. Going to work, including commuting time, we could be leaving our fur babies alone 8, 10, 12 hours easily. And that's just unreasonable. In some countries, y'all, like Sweden, it's not even legal. Like, there are laws against leaving a dog alone for so long. So we shouldn't be surprised that our animals react the way that they do. A dog just can't cope with being left alone for such a long period of time. As people who live with dogs, we should try to structure our lives so that we're not away for too long. We can all be unsettled by changes in our routines, and that's as true as our dogs as it is to us. Now, generally, let's just think about this. We recover from changes in our lives. Dogs, like most people, are responsive and adaptive to change, and they can usually cope. But obviously, y'all, every dog's an individual, and some dogs do seem able to cope fairly well with being left alone. While others, for whatever combination of genetic and environmental reasons, will overreact. If we're out of the house just one or two hours, which they ought to be able to handle, some can't. Some people love their own company. Some people hate it. 
That's pretty much true for dogs as well. It all depends on a combination of individual factors and dogs' personality. So now I want to go more into extreme cases. Like, how can we know whether the dog is experiencing mere separation anxiety or has advanced full-blown depression? Great question. Now, behavior experts can really help with this. There is a whole range of people who call themselves dog behaviorists. If they're any good, they won't offer advice over the phone. They'll come to the home so they can really understand exactly what goes on there and give advice that's concrete in the environment where the animal is. The problem is with this, there's no regulation of that profession whatsoever. So you can go to a behavioral expert who is a complete waste of time and money. On the other hand, you could go to one who's really good maybe. There is high variability and expertise in people who call themselves dog behaviorists and you need to watch out because unlike with veterinarians where there is a qualifying exam and certifications, there's no equivalent formula ensured expertise among dog behaviorists. There are certain certifications they can get, like their certification for professional dog trainers, which is the CCPDT, you know, which is fairly reputable. And there are a few others. So just do your due diligence in this case. Some veterinarians are expert dog behaviorists. Most vets are not that well informed about behavior, but there are many that are. How do you determine which vets are actually going to be good on behavior? Great question. So. As in human medicine, veterinarians can specialize in this. And if they specialize, they are board certified. So you can find them on the internet, of course, but there aren't that many. Just a heads up. I think they're like around anywhere between 3,000 to 4,000 vets in the United States. And only about a few dozen are actually board certified vet behaviorists. So if you're lucky enough to have one of those in your area or your neighborhood, that would be... an excellent person to choose to call on for this situation and one advantage I would say of having a behavior expert who's also a vet is that if it's called for they can prescribe medication that's going to help such as an antidepressant for your dog so with all that said our goal here today is to figure out ways to keep our dogs happy when we go out and I'm going to give you five, maybe six things that you're going to start doing now that's going to make it a better transition as your fur baby is needing to get adjusted of you being away from the home a little bit more. But the first one I'm going to say, listen closely, limit their time alone. If you work at home, it's fine to go out for a while be it for business meeting or just hit the town with a loved one or some friends. But if you're going to be gone for a bigger part of the day, at least have one visit at the midpoint from like a dog walker, a neighbors, just somebody so that your pet can have some company. They can get out to smell the roses, see the scenery, use the bathroom, get some exercise. They need that. So you have to limit the time alone. If, it's, if it can't be you, which I prefer it is, somebody that you care for that can come by and provide care for them. Dog walker. You can use Rover. I have a coupon if you need one. Um, Wag as well. Just somebody to do a drop in with you with them in between time. So if you're gone for eight hours, they can come at the four or four and a half hour mark just to peep their head in so that by the time that you get back home, they are ready to go back out again. Limit that time alone. That's number one. Number two, guys, you're going to vary that the time that you spend away. So the standard advice for those who work away from home all day is to leave home and come back at the same time every day, since adapting to a schedule helps your dog to stay calm. But if you work from home, it is useful if your comings and goings are more unpredictable so that your dog can basically say to itself, I see they go away. And though it's hard to see when they do that, I know that they're always going to come back. So number two, vary the time that you spend away. Spread it out. Next up, number three, don't make a big production of your comings and goings. Now, I know this is hard for us because we love to be like, all right, mommy's leaving. I'm just going to go down the street for a minute. I'm going to go visit mommy's friend. But we need to resist the temptation to make a big production of it when we leave and when we come back. 
It's generally a better idea to slip away quietly without making a big fuss. Likewise, when you return, this will simply lower the temperature of you being away, which will help keep your dog to stay calm. Number four, you're going to give your dog uh, a food toy before you leave. Now, the less time your dog is thinking about missing you, the better. And a food toy can occupy your dog's mind by keeping him or her busy and focus on something other than your absence. So give your dog a food toy before you leave. Stimulation that's mental is always going to be key. And last one, number five, before you leave home and when you return, spend quality time, y'all. Pet your dog, feed them, let it sit on your lap, take a walk. Uh, Go outside and play with them. Anything, y'all. Anything, especially serves multitude functions, allowing your pet to empty its bowels and bladder and using up energy to help maintain calm. And of course, showing that you love and value your dog. Spend time with them. Smells, play, let them watch you cook, go outside, stretch your legs, let them run around, get a toy. You moving around is good for you. And it's even better for them. So before you leave home, spend that time with them. When you return, spend even more quality time with them. At the end of the day, when a dog is bored and stressed, he or she may create their own form of entertainment. And by doing these things, you're going to prevent those things from happening so that your fur baby is happy and the stress is less on you as well. If you made it this far in the episode and you like what you heard so far, go ahead and tap the five stars in the rating as well as leave a positive review below. I look forward to talking to you guys again soon.